drummingforlife.com. Hey there, it's Vaughn at drummingforlife.com. Aloha. I hope you're doing well. In this lesson, I just want to talk about the ergonomics of drumming and how to set up your drum set the right way. Before we get into that, I would love it if you'd subscribe to my channel and swish that like button if you like the video. Drop a comment. I'd love to connect with you and I do respond to all of my comments. So uh, let's talk about cymbal angle first, all right? Uh, your cymbal angle really should be about like this, okay? See how this is kind of set up? They're not, uh, you're not you know, straight up and down. They're not uh, completely you know, flat. They're just a slight angle to them. Uh, this is really great because what it does is it allows you to play with your arm at about 95 degrees. Uh, when I'm playing uh, drums, I might, as long as I can keep my arm at about 95 degree angle, it's going to be the, probably the most relaxed position I can play in. Uh, if I'm kind of my arm is too close to my torso like this, or it's too far extended, it's going to cause some uh, pain and can lead to uh, carpal tunnel syndrome or uh, tendonitis. So you want to avoid that. This kind of angle is perfect to keep my arm perfectly at that kind of 95 degree angle, no matter where I am. And the advantage to having them both the same angle is that it's easy to transition from one symbol to the next. If I'm, you know, one symbol is different angle from the other, it's going to be a little harder. It's going to require more muscle memory to make that happen. Try to keep them about the same angle and you'll have no problem. Now, of course, this is a jazz drum setup and this is what we do. We want, we, we use all of our cymbals basically for playing, for riding, right, uh, most of the time. Uh, so this is a really an ideal, optimal setup to make uh, smooth transitions between your ride cymbals. So regarding the hi-hats, uh, I don't play them too high and I don't play them too low. Again, it comes down to what's comfortable for my arm. If you can see my arm, I'm at that kind of 95 degree angle again. Really, really helpful to keep it kind of in that range. So a good way to measure that would be to kind of adjust the height and just check how's your arm when you're playing uh, your, your hi-hat. Do you have to bring your arm up like this? Probably not a good idea. Do you have to bring your, your arm down like this? Not a good idea. So I think if you can find that in between, the in-between place, uh, it's nice, nice and comfortable. Uh, that's going to work really good for you. And I use my left hand on the hi-hat a lot as well. And so if I'm doing that, it's going to also, this height is actually very, very easy uh, to play. It's not quite, a, it's, well, it kind of is a 95 degree, but it's usually between a 90 degree and a 95 degree angle with my left arm. But still, it's very relaxed, okay? If it was too high, it would be, my arm would be like this. I'd have to kind of crunch my arm in. If it's too low, my arm would be like this. So you really want to find that kind of in-between place. I think that's going to work really, really good for you. Especially when I'm doing a lot of, you know, a lot of hi-hat stuff, hi-hat work. This is a great height for me. And one other thing I want to mention about the hi-hats is uh, in terms of the, the distance between the cymbals, I like to keep it maybe about an inch, less than an inch, three quarters of an inch uh, apart. The reason I do that is because it doesn't require so much energy to get the symbols to make contact. If I start raising the, this, the top symbol, it just requires more energy to make, this, make the same sound, which doesn't make sense to me. If it's, if it's closer than that, it doesn't give me enough volume, so I feel like I have to work harder to get extra sound. So again, this comes down to effort, right? Make, set up your drums ergonomically so that it requires the least amount of effort to get the maximum effect. And I found that about an inch, three quarters of an inch to an inch uh, apart really works great. Now the tensioning and the spring of every hi-hat hat, uh, stand is a little bit different, so you have to adjust for that. But just as a general rule, that's what I like to do. And another thing is on the bottom of the hi-hat, there's always a kind of an adjustment that you can adjust the hi-hat to make it uh, to angle the symbol a little bit, and that's a good idea to do that because you want a little bit of an angle so that you take out the air pocket. If you don't have that angle in the symbol, uh, you're going to end up, your symbols are going to go <laughs> kind of sound. So you want to put a little bit of an angle on your bottom symbol so that'll give your symbols an, an easier way to make that nice, tight, projected chick sound. All right, so now I want to talk about the angle of the snare drum. 
Now, many times I see drummers uh, with their snare drum kind of at an angle like this, all right? You're kind of a little angled up. And I don't recommend that. And the reason I don't recommend that is because when your snare drum is angled like that, because it's so close to you, uh, it limits your rebound. And because you basically need a, a flat surface, which is what I recommend you use, uh, flatten your snare drum out so you get the maximum rebound, okay? If my, my drum is angled like that, it's already kind of cutting into that rebound. It's limiting the range of motion of the stick. So I encourage you to, to make your snare drum flat. Now there are some drummers that actually, you know, they're gonna kind of angle their snare drum kind of like this, uh, you know, kind of like a, to, to fit traditional grip, right? And if they do that, that's great. If that, that works for them, that's fine. But I like to also play with uh, match, match grip, especially when I'm doing cross sticks. That's kind of hard for me. I don't like that reach uh, when it's that kind of angle. So I try to, I like playing my snare drum in, in a kind of a flat position. Just a lot easier to play. And also I play a variety of styles of music. So it's actually much easier to always just get used to the muscle memory of one snare position, one snare angle. Uh, and uh, to play all of my styles of music. So I really don't have to adjust my angle of my drum at all. One more thing I want to mention too is that when you're doing, uh, if you go back to the angle where it's kind of angling up towards you, if you're doing a cross stick, it's also going to kind of uh, put more pressure on your wrist, which then can lead to repetitive stress injury, uh, carpal tunnel syndrome or tendinitis in your forearms. So, you know, really keeping that snare drum flat is the way to go. Let's talk about the rack tom. The rack tom is slightly angled. Some drummers like it, like to play it flat, which is fine too, because you get a lot of rebound, like I was talking about with the snare drum. But I recommend that you just have a slight angle to it. Works really good for me, and it makes it kind of a nice jumping off place to get from the rack tom down to the floor tom, and then over to the snare drum. Also uh, nice between the, it's kind of a similar angle of the, the rack tom to the ride cymbals. So it's actually very easy to transition from the floor, from the rack tom to the ride cymbals as well. Now the floor tom, I usually keep it about one inch to a half an inch to one inch below the, the height of the snare drum. Uh, it makes it just more comfortable for me to do fills and things. Uh, and it, it's flat, so it's, there's no angle to it. It just, it's nice and flat, so it's easy to move and transition from the floor tom to the rack tom to the snare drum. The floor tom is also a looser drum, so it takes more effort to get a bounce. If I have an angle on that at all, again, I'll be eating into my bounce. So I try to keep it flat to give myself maximum bounce on the floor tom. And last but not least, the bass drum. This is something I've talked about in other videos. Uh, I encourage you, when you set up your bass drum, to make sure that your beater hits flush on the drum head. Don't let it uh, have this kind of uh, angle to it. Uh, sometimes I show up to gigs, so imagine this is the, this is the bass drum head, uh, and the, bass, the, the drum set is set up kind of weird. So where the bass drum pedal, instead of contacting it flush like this, it actually, it goes like this, so it kind of overextends. When you overextend like that, what you end up doing is having to use a ton of extra energy to, to play the bass drum. And for me, it messes up my timing because I'm so used to playing flush. If it's like this, then I, my timing gets off. And so a combination of timing and energy. It also can lead to repetitive stress injury in your ankle and your foot. Okay, so be very careful. Whenever you set up your bass drum, make sure that you extend those bass drum legs out as much as you can to get this flush bass drum action happening. All right, so check out my feet. You can see kind of, it's, I mean, you can kind of can't tell from this angle. I'll show you the top angle again. You can, you can check it out, but you can see that it's very, very effortless. I mean, I really don't have to put any effort at all into playing my bass drum. And here's, here's from the top angle. So you can see it's, it's really just hitting flush on to the bass drum head. It's not, you know, overextending in any way. Now, I just want to mention about bass drum pedal tension. Uh, you know, some drummers love to have their bass drum pedal really, really tight. Just crank it up so the spring is really tight and it requires a lot of energy and a lot of effort to play. Uh, other drummers like it super, super loose, uh, like it's just kind of floating. So I don't like it to be too loose, I don't like it to be too hard, kind of like it in between. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think that's kind of the way to go. 
Uh, you want a little bit of tension so that you can pull out doubles and maybe triples and things like that on the bass drum. Uh, and you don't want it too tight because then it kind of limits your ability to do clean doubles and triples and things. So uh, I think someplace in between is a really nice uh, approach. And I sometimes play with heel up, uh, but most of the time I'm playing with heel down. So if you, whatever you use, you know, check it, see how the tension feels for you. Uh, and you shouldn't have to be putting tons and tons and tons of extra energy into playing your bass drum. It really should be, uh, really should just be uh, comfortable for you to play and uh, in a variety of playing situations. Now that's it for the drums. The last thing I want to mention about uh, your setup is the drum throne, okay? And the drum throne height, I think the ideal height is actually to get your legs to do about a 95 degree angle. So again, we're talking about this 95 degree angle for the arms. I think it's also great for the legs. So as you might be able to see, there's just a little bit of an angle here to my left leg. There's also a little bit of an angle to my, my right leg. Uh, and I just found that that works really, really good. It feels very comfortable. Now, I know other drummers, great drummers that sit way high and other drummers that sit way low. Uh, but I think in terms of the ergonomics of our body, the mechanics of our body, I found that this kind of 95 degree rule works really great for the legs also. And as I've mentioned in another video about my drum throne cushion, I'll put the link below in the description. Uh, you know, this thing is, is really awesome. This is the, uh, the egg sitter cushion. The thing is, it's as seen on TV, believe it or not, it actually works. Uh, the design is awesome. Go check out the video. Uh, but this is, a, I, work, I use this on all of my, my uh, drum thrones. I take this with me everywhere, all my gigs, rehearsals, uh, everything. So uh, I put this in there and that really, really helps. Uh, helps my lower back, helps my legs. Uh, before I was using this, I had a hard time even standing up between sets. So this has really made a difference for me. It might make a really big difference for you too. So I encourage you to go check that out. So thanks so much for watching. Now in the description below, I've got lots of stuff to support your drumming. I hope you go check all those links out as well. I've got great drumming courses. I've got great drumless tracks. I've got private lessons. I've got all kinds of stuff to support your jazz drumming and help you be the best you can be behind the drums. So have fun setting up your drums and uh, experiment with the angles and the, you know, kind of the ergonomics of your drum set. And as I always say, keep on drumming. Take care. Drumming for life.